Okay, stop and see if. Let's go on. <laughs> hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matthew Harkey. Well, welcome back to the show. We're going to do something interesting today, something that we don't do very often in the show. We're going to taste the same wine from different vintages, which is something that's really cool. I don't have access to a wine shop. I don't own wine, so we don't get to do this very often. I'm very excited. So, what are the wines we're going to do it with today? We're actually doing them with wines. We're, do <laughs> we're doing this show with wines from Bosnia, Herzegovina, and then more specifically, Western Herzegovina. Now, people often say, Bosnia, are they making wines? What the heck? <laughs> Herzegovina is actually very close to the Adriatic Sea. Uh, where these wines are from, it's actually the same latitude as Montalcino in Tuscany. So you can see, and it's it's only 20, maybe 20, 30 kilometers from the Adriatic Sea, true Mediterranean climate. That just gives you an example of the types of wine, the types, the climate, and what's possible there. They've been making wines there for a long time, actually. And we have a winery here, uh, Vinardia Schegro. And before I get into tasting the wines... I want to give a shout out to the, one of their brand new projects. It's an amazing wine. This is the Kirsch Orange Jelavka. Jelavka is the grape from 2015. This is an amber wine, macerated white wine, wild yeasts, spontaneous fermentation. This is phenomenal. You want to say anything about this, Shireen? You love this so much. Yeah, I love it because it has um, gentle tannins, high acidity. Uh, flavors of flowers, orange peel, a little bit of peach note. Just, just a really nice drinking wine. Yeah, this is great. This is actually on, uh, we did an article and as Drunk by Exotic Wine Travel, I'll put in the description box. If you're not reading those articles, what we do is every week we select a wine that we've tasted or drank and we write a short 500, 500 to 700, 100 word article on it. This is really impressive. I was really impressed for a first effort. Ready to taste the wines? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to taste actually Blatina. What is a Blatina? It's a grape that's, it really is only in Western Herzegovina, Bosnia, Herzegovina. And it's cool because it creates bo uh, wines with medium body and still fresh acidity. A lot of wines in that area can be very Mediterranean, especially in coastal Croatia where the border is. Really high in sugar, body quite rustic. Uh, I love this grape. Shireen is so so on it, right? Yeah, so so. <laughs> I mean, I haven't. We haven't found real, real complex versions of the wine, but we found very nice examples. Uh, I like this wine very much. Let's get started. First, we have here the 2013 Carsus Blatina. This is the same winery, Vinaria Schegro Carsus Blatina. This is Blatina made from 50-year-old vines. It's aged just under a year in Slavonian oak, I believe. I have had the 13 before, but I just want to taste it next to the 15, and I liked it very much. I think uh, originally I gave it 3.8 out of 5 on Vivino. I think it's very nice drinking. Here you go, on, take that. Blatina is an interesting grape. It tastes a little bit like Maybe a simpler Sangiovese. I'm talking about Emilia Romagna, not, not Chianti Classico, not the big burly wines. It's a unique grape because it has a female-only flower. So what happens is usually grapes have both male and female flower. They pollinate themselves, no problem. Blatna has a female-only flower, so it can be difficult in the vineyard sometimes. Let's give this a smell. What do you think? It smells a lot like Sangiovese. Oh my gosh, it's tons. <laughs> really Sangiovese-esque. You get the chocolate, the Mediterranean mm. herbs, sour, sour cherry, cherry city, yeah. which I love. You guys know if you watch the show, I love sour cherry. That's why I love uh, Sangiovese, Nebbiolo so much. Uh, also Norello Mascalese. Quite a little bit denser than I remember. Let's give this a let's give this a little bit of a taste. Yeah, Yeah, spits. It's still early in the morning. <laughs> um, really nice. Like I start. It's not one dimensional, but it's not overly complex. 
kind of medium body wine. Blatna, you have lighter tannins, although this has, this has more tannins than normal Blatna. I'm, I'm guessing it's from the wood, some of the extraction. Um, nice! Chocolate, herb, sour cherry, a little bit of cedar, anything that you want to add on that? The acidity is pretty high. Acidity is high, that, yeah. I would think that you need quite a fair bit of aging in a bottle. It would benefit and the flavors would round up a little bit more. But the base, the spine, the flavors are all there. Good wine. This is among one of my favorite producers of Blatna. We also like uh, Burkich very much. Newich, uh, Stoyich are producing some nice stuff as well. Uh, I'm really high. I'm still about 3.8. Maybe you would even go 3.9 on this one. I think it's pretty good effort. All right, let's go. Let's move on. Let's check. Let's taste the 15 together. Slide that glass right over. Okay. Uh, we know the winemaker, and he's really excited about the Karsus Blatna 2015, just released on the market. Let's give this, because it's so different, I think I might actually do the Italian thing and give it, uh, give both glasses a little bit of a rinse, since we have plenty of wine here. Okay, 15 was a very good area in this whole region, this whole ex-Yugoslavia and Balkan region. A lot of the barrel samples that we tasted last year from 15 were really good. Let's give this a smell. First of all, the color is about the same. Uh, kind of a darker ruby color. There is some some tawniness on the rim. Let's give this a let's give, give this a go. What you picking up on the fifteen? Banana. You're happy. No banana. Oh, it's it's still it's yeah. still fairly a young wine. This is the thing, I think. This is really interesting to smell the taste, the differences here. Uh, this wine's young, still needs a lot of time in the body. Kind of has some fresh fermentation flavors to it, kind of like the banana. These wines are just open, though. We haven't aired them out, really, right? When you go underneath, go underneath uh, the fresh fermentation flavors, you get some black cherry. It's not as earthy Mediterranean herb as 13. It tastes kind of, for me, uh, this tastes like a really fresh Sangiovese. That's what it smells like. Let me give this a go. What do you think? I think it's juicier right now. It's also it also has very good weight in the mouth. The first of all, the, the the fruit on this is phenomenal. There is nice there's a nice acidic core to it. Nice body, it's extracting nice fruit. It just doesn't have the tertiary notes that have developed here yet. It's not as rounded put together. This actually might be more age worthy because of the acidity, right? As of now, I don't think it's ready to drink. As of right now, I would probably wait in about another year. Anything else you want to add to that? <laughs> I want to add that the labels are, are in different position. That's what I like about small production. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not hand so. Um, like I said, this is going to be good. I'm not going to score this wine as of right now because I don't think it's ready to drink for my palate. Uh, I think that it has the potential to be in the same range as this, 3.8 to 4. Right now, it's just not ready to drink. Anything else you want to add to that? That's about all. Really, Latina is worth a try. It has very high, it has high acidity, good um, wine to go with food. Yeah, so uh, be on the lookout for these. These are mostly exported to Croatia, some other countries around the EU. Really nice producer. We're a huge fan of this. I had this at 4.3 out of 5 on Vivino. I thought it was comparable to a Radicon Rebola Giala. So that's about it for the show. Guys, if you like this video... Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. I will see you next episode.